Imagine you're a scientist trying to develop a new drug to cure a fatal disease. It is vital that you know how your molecule will react within a human cell. However, in such a small environment with such a small number of molecules, normal deterministic modeling methods can no longer be used. Enter Stochastic Physics in Biology. Well, that was random, and that's what we're talking about today. Stochastic physics in biology is based on the fundamental principle that random variations in heat at the molecular level make standard mathematical solutions invalid while working on the order of mere dozens to hundreds of molecules, like in a cell. This randomness is termed stochasticity. Stochasticity plays a large role in intracellular reactions due to the small number of molecules involved, playing an important role in things like gene expression and mutations. When modeling intracellular processes, stochasticity is impossible to ignore. Consider a coin toss. If you flip a coin once, there's a 50-50 chance that it will land heads. Now say you flip a coin a million times. It would be highly unlikely that you'd get, say, 700,000 heads and 300,000 tails. It is probable that there would be around 500,000 heads and 500,000 tails, give or take. But consider a small sample, 10 tosses. In this case, you could get 5 heads and 5 tails, but you wouldn't be surprised to get 7 heads and 3 tails. Essentially, like coin tosses, molecular interactions can fluctuate greatly when present in small numbers, like in a cell, rendering deterministic solutions invalid. Well, how can we approach this problem? The answer lies in the stochastic simulation algorithm. The stochastic simulation algorithm was introduced by Daniel T. Gillespie in 1976 and is known as the Gillespie algorithm. The Gillespie algorithm generates a statistically exact solution by running many simulations on the same system. There are four main steps to the Gillespie algorithm. In initialization, the number of molecules in the system and probabilities are set. Next is the Monte Carlo step, where random numbers are carefully generated according to the reaction probabilities to determine when the next reaction occurs. The simulation then updates the time by the randomly generated amount from step 2, and updates the number of molecules based on the reaction that occurred. Finally, steps 2 and 3 are iterated until the reactants reach 0. The simulation is then run many times to generate a statistically exact result. As you can see, these different simulations can vary greatly from what a deterministic solution would have given. This is because randomness is inherent in molecular collisions down to the quantum level. So, next time you find yourself developing a drug to cure a deadly disease within a cell, remember that you can't ignore randomness in a system. And you can call it stochastic. <laughs>